What's up guys, this is Mr. Meiosis and this is uh, the Intermediate Value Theorem. So this, value, this theorem basically says, well it doesn't basically, this is what it says. If f is continuous, if f is a function that's continuous on a closed interval a to b, and k is any y value between f of a and f of b, then there must be at least one x value c between a and b such that f of c equals k. Um, that seems like a lot, but really it's, it's a very, like, duh theorem, very, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, here's, here's what it's saying. If I have a function that's continuous in the, clo in the interval a and b closed, so they're closed circles, and f of a is between f of, and there's a value, okay, so there's f of a and f of b, and k is somewhere in between here, so k is in between here somewhere then there must be a value that corresponds to k that's in between a and b, and we call that c, and there's just got to be there. That's it, all right? So really what we're doing is, does a function work for this intermediate value theorem? So that's what the question is. So my first example here is, I've got a function x, <coughs> x squared minus x, and the question is, does the intermediate value theorem hold or f of c equals 12 on the interval 0 to 5. So I have to check a few things. The first thing is, is the function continuous? Well, x squared minus x, is it continuous on 0 to 5? Sure is, x squared minus x is a parabola. Continuous everywhere. Okay, next thing is, is 12 between f of 0 and f of 5? So I've got I to figure that out. So I'm going to go f of 0, and I'm going to plug that in, and that's going to be 0. And I'm going to go f of 5, I'm going to plug that in, and I'm going to get 25 minus 5 is 20. Now, is f of c equal 12 in between 0 and 20? Yes, it is. So we're just going to put a little arrow there, and we're going to say f of c equals 12 is in between 0 and 20. So since it's continuous, and since 12 is between 0 and 20, the interme intermediate value theorem does hold for this function for the information we have. So now, let's find C. So what we're going to do is, we're going to plug C in, so C squared minus C, and we're going to set that equal to 12. And then we're going to solve this guy. So C squared minus C minus 12 equals 0. We're going to go ahead and factor that. C uh, minus 4, C plus 3 equals 0, and we're going to get 4 and negative 3 And which one works? This one works. This one doesn't work because 4 is in that interval. Okay? So we've done, we've checked the intermediate value theorem and then we found C. So now let's look at my next example. If g of x equals x squared minus 4 and x over x minus 2, g of c is equal to 4 in between the intervals 0 and 3. Well, we already can stop at the first condition, which is, is this continuous on the interval? 0 to 3, because is it? It is not, because we have a denominator that's x minus 2, and we know that x cannot equal to 2. Even if we simplify that, there's going to be a hole in the graph. So even though we can simplify this, right, by factoring, um, we're going to get still a hole in the graph, because that's what happens when you get a hole in the graph, we factor it out and simplify. So um, since, since since g of x is not continuous at x equals 2, the intermediate value theorem does not hold. Okay? So we can't even do the rest of it because it doesn't even, we have stopped there. All right? So that's it. That's all that, uh, that's all that the intermediate value theorem says. All right? IBT, see you later. Bye-bye.